What's up, what's up, what's up? This is another episode of Break the Silence with Cyborg. Thanks for tuning in, clicking on the video. Um, we just got done watching the Philadelphia 76ers um, lose game six to the Miami Heat, um, 99 to 90. Uh, the Heat advanced to the Eastern Conference Finals um, for the second time in the last three years. They made the finals in the bubble. Um, and last year they got um, beat up in the first round against the Bucks. So um, they're back in the Eastern Conference Finals. Sixers are back um, where they usually are, which is losing early in the playoffs. Um, and um, I, I want to spend a little time talking about the game tonight, but also I think I, I want to talk more big, big picture with the Sixers. We'll get into that in a second. Tonight, Joel Embiid gave you 20 points, 12 12 rebounds on 7 of 24 shooting. Um, Joel Embiid is obviously hurt. He's been dealing with uh, dealing with uh, a torn ligament in his thumb. Um, and that's not even counting the, the broken um, orbital, orbital bone in his face, which is why he's wearing that mask. I do know that, you know, <laughs> when you're in so much pain from your face, mentally it's harder to attack the paint, um, do things like that, try to bang for rebounds, play good defense, those kind of things, which, I mean, they, they held him to 99 points. The defense wasn't terrible tonight, but um, but it, it definitely makes – it's definitely in your psyche. So you can't uh, maybe play as physical as you normally would. And Embiid's a very physical player. He's, uh, aside from Giannis, maybe the most the most physical player in the NBA. I'd have to, I'd have to think about it. But Giannis, Giannis would be number one. But um, – and Jimmy Butler gave you 32 on the Heat. We need to give this man some respect. I am I'm not the biggest Jimmy Butler fan as as far as um you know, I'm just not like like a fan, like I don't root for Jimmy Butler. He's he's on the Heat, which is kind of a direct rival of uh the Celtics. Um but Jimmy Butler if you've ever played like pickup or um any school high school ball, anything like that. There were players on the team that maybe weren't necessarily your best player as far as like they might not average most points, rebounds, assists, anything like that. But they just, there's some intangible that they're just a winning basketball player. And they're also, on the flip side, there are guys who are losing basketball players that, you know, can put up great numbers, but their team success is never there. And Jimmy Butler's one of those guys that regardless of any stats, which he had a good stat line, he had a good stat line tonight, but regardless of stats, regardless of anything like that, his teams are going to be better with Jimmy Butler on the floor uh, for them. And honestly, the Sixers are probably missing a Jimmy Butler on their squad, which they had a couple years ago, and that's the closest they've been to winning a title. Um, it, it was, uh, if you remember correctly, the Kawhi shot um, when he played for Toronto. And the Raptors went on to win the title. So, you know, if the if the Sixers pulled that out, maybe you know, maybe that was their that was their opportunity. I was talking about uh, in, in the video last night, talking about the Celtics losing and how windows are such a short period of time, and they close up if you don't take advantage of them. And that's, I think that was probably the Sixers' window, and it's probably past. I think uh, I, I want to move on to the bigger picture. The, the Heat um, in the next round will play the winner of the Bucks Celtics. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be the Bucks. I think they win tomorrow night to close out that series. But um, and I would pick the Bucks in that series. We'll see. But the, but the Heat are legit. They show up to play every night. They they show up to play good basketball. Um, they're really deep. They have a really good culture. Um, they play really hard. Um, interesting. Keep your eye on Duncan Robinson. Didn't really play in this series, uh, which he has played in big games before for them and made a lot of big shots. Let's see if he plays against the Bucks. I don't know if it was a strategic move for this series in particular, or if it's something that Eric Spolstra has seen in the bigger picture that maybe you know they're losing faith in Duncan Robinson. But they just signed him to a decent contract, so <laughs> you'd like to believe he has some role on the squad, but. Um, if I'm the Sixers, you just traded Andre Drummond, Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, 
and multiple first round picks for James Harden. James Harden tonight gave you 11 points and nine assists. James Harden shot two shots in the second half of a closeout game. I, a couple years ago, was the biggest James Harden fan on the planet. Um, he was my favorite player in the NBA. I thought he was just fun to watch. Not necessarily that I thought he was the best player in the NBA. I just thought he was really fun to watch. I, his step back move is sweet. He blows by people. He seems smart. He was scoring 40 a night. Like it was crazy. James Harden, peak James Harden was, was awesome. And he was giving you, you know, seven to 10 assists. James Harden, he is so far from that player at this point that it's unbelievable. The, James Harden, and I, and I was just looking at his stats to, you know, kind of get a feel. He, he was averaging like 22 points and 10 assists. Now, 10 assists is solid, but he's just not the same guy. And I don't know. We've been kind of blaming on the hamstring. I'm not sure if that's what, what it is, but I won't. But, but looking at it from a Philadelphia 76ers front office perspective, you traded so many assets. And people would say potentially, well, Ben Simmons wasn't playing for you anyway. Well, then my pushback would be you could have traded Ben Simmons for a C.J. McCollum straight up and kept your Seth Curry and Andre Drummond and first-round picks. And I think that's a deal that I'm pretty confident Portland would have took. Um, they didn't really get a whole lot back in the CJ McCollum trade anyway. So if, if you would have rolled out the Sixers team and you would have had, um, Tyrese Maxey, who really took a step this year, we'll see if he can take another step into maybe like all-star level next year, but you have Tyrese Maxey, Seth Curry, CJ McCollum, Tobias, James, uh, in, um, Joel Embiid. And then you have Drummond off the bench, Nyang off the bench, I think that squad would have been better than the one we just watched. Um, Harden didn't pan out. They swung and they missed. And I don't blame the Sixers for trying because you felt like you were wasting a year of Embiid's prime. But their swing and the miss is probably going to cost them the rest of Embiid's prime because now you have no real trade assets. In fact... You have a couple guys that you really need to get off their contracts. Tobias Harris is not a, he's a bad contract. He's one of the worst contracts in the NBA currently. Um, you got you know, you got to get off of that one. Um, James Harden is about to enter um, free agency. He's about to he, he's wanting a new deal. If I'm the Sixers, I'm not giving that man a max contract and but you, you've almost backed yourself into a corner where if you don't give him that, then you traded all those assets for a guy to fail you for half a season. You're just, they're just in the middle of one of the worst scenarios that you could possibly be in. And the Sixers did the whole process thing for however many years, it seemed like forever. It was four or five years they did the process and thought they had panned out when they got Embiid, they got Simmons, um, they had Harris, they had Jimmy Butler at one point. You have all these good players and it didn't it didn't pan out. If I'm the Sixers, I'm they're in one of the worst spots in the NBA. Though uh because of how good Embiid is, and I'm sure Harden will be a little better next year. We'll see. Um They'll make the playoffs, obviously. But in my opinion, they are no threat to compete for a title. And I would expect the Sixers to get bounced in the first round next year. Maybe the second round without drastic change. Now, one of those drastic changes, in my opinion, Doc Rivers needs fired. And I am not someone who believes Doc Rivers is a good coach. I, I, um, I'm a Celtics fan. And he coached with Boston. And I've never seen a man get more. There's only Well, there's, there's one coach that got more leeway because they won one title. And it was Jeff Fisher <laughs> for the Rams, if you remember, uh, in, in the NFL. He won a title in the early 2000s and coached for like the next 10 to 15 years. Just kind of 
banking on that title that he had won a long time ago. And as soon as they fired him, that team got exponentially better and they just won the Super Bowl last year. So Doc Rivers, though, he won one title with this incredible squad in Boston. Then he goes over to the Clippers where he's got an incredible squad, multiple incredible squads, uh, by the way. He had the Blake Griffin, Chris Paul, DeAndre Jordan, uh, J.J. Redick, Matt Barnes squad, and never really competed for anything. They didn't make the Western Conference Finals. And then he goes to, or he doesn't go anywhere. That team kind of overhauls, and he gets Kawhi Leonard and Paul George that was by far the favorite, and that team fails. So at what point, and now, now Doc Rivers is with who some people call the best player in the NBA and Joel Embiid. He's not the best player in the NBA, but Skip Bayless has been arguing that he is, um, which he argues a lot of wrong things. But uh, you you have potentially the best, one of the top three players in the NBA, and you can't, you can't get past the second round. Last year, you get knocked out by the Hawks in the second round, who the Hawks showed you that they were fraudulent and not very good. At what point? At what point do we maybe reevaluate this Doc Rivers thing? He's he's been given so many good squads. It's not like he was given a bunch of rookies and asked to go out there and work a miracle. I would let Doc Rivers go tonight, and I would I would move on. I I think they need a new voice. I think they need some toughness in the locker room. Um, someone like a Jimmy Butler, if they could get I don't know if like a Marcus Morris kind of guy. Um, and I don't even know if that would turn you around, but, but they, they're soft. I mean, Harden, Embiid, Embiid's just not, I mean, he's, he's a superstar, so he's not really like your enforcer, like some teams have. Um, so if I'm the Sixers, you're in a tough spot. Um, the Heat. We'll see what happens in the next round. Um, my guess would be that the Bucks beat him in six. Um, but I think it could be a dogfight of a series. The Heat uh, are physical, and if Chris Middleton's not back, then I think that definitely changes the series. But, um, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, overhaul the Sixers team. Let's uh, Now, I really don't mind the Sixers sucking because I'm not a fan. And I'm not a fan of their fans either. <laughs> but the Sixers have made one conference final since Dr. J retired. Fun fact for you. That was a really, really long time ago. One conference finals. And this is supposed to be one of the most storied franchises in the league. And nothing to show for it. So if you're a Sixers fan, I apologize. Um, you're in a tough spot. You're probably going to have to uh, get off some bad contracts and see if you can make some moves to probably, you're probably not going to be great next year, but maybe, maybe if you can make some moves to be good in two years, but um, that'll be the end of this one. Uh, we're about to watch the Maverick Suns. Um, my guess is that the Suns close this out tonight, but we'll see. So I work out.